a very informative and inspiring session this evening. Um, our presenter will be Selma Kossel, a co-op owner and a volunteer extraordinaire. Um, as Gloria Lloyd would say, she's a worker bee, which she is. Um, she also, besides that, is has a scientific background and combined that with her passion for health and um, environmental sustainability. And she um, started for it with her own home, her own family and um, making, um, using oils, essential oils and non-toxic products in order to um, make her home uh, free of toxic chemicals. Um, this evening, she will show us um, how to make certain uh, recipes and um, non-toxic remedies and um, household products. Um, so it's gonna be very exciting. Um, but before we begin, um, let me tell you that you can put all your questions in the chat box. There will be a point at some um, in the middle, but most of the questions will be answered at the end. Um, and um, this session will also be recorded and you'll find it on our Facebook sometime tomorrow, probably. Um, and otherwise you will also put Selma's email address in the box, um, in the chat box. So if you have specific questions, um, you can uh, contact her directly. Um, that said, Selma, take it away. Thank you, Els. <clears throat> and thank you to everyone um, for spending your Friday night with me and our fabulous co-op. So I, um, I, I just want you to know that uh, I am today years old doing my first PowerPoint presentation. So I, uh, I know, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 58 years old, but I am today years old for this. And I'd like to thank my daughter, Hannah, <clears throat> for being my mentor and my educator on how to navigate through all the icons and PowerPoint. And uh, she really is, has been my best cheerleader all along the way. Her patience was very much appreciated because um, uh, as a few times in the beginning, I thought she must have felt like me when uh, I, I had to teach her how to use a spoon 23 years ago. So uh, I, I'm a little technical challenged here, but I'm, I'm here anyway, so. Um, Bear with me while I share my screen. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so my presentation this evening is called Healthy Home, Healthy You, Healthy Planet. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see, why is my screen not advancing here? Hmm. Someone try your space bar. Try your space bar. Yeah, I tried that. Um, trying my up and down bars, my buttons. But, um, you're, you're trying your mouse, clicking your mouse on it too? Yes. Oh, here we go. All right. I guess I'm going to have to use my mouse. Your, I bet your space bar will work now. Okay. Yeah, my up and down buttons work too. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Okay. So tonight's agenda. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about some common household cleaning products that are out there on the market, their toxicities, and I'm going to show you uh, what to use instead. 
Um, a lot of the uh, recipes that I have made for you tonight are um, uh, have essential oils as ingredients. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about a healthy home, uh, focusing on uh, things you can do in your kitchen, your laundry, your bathroom, even carpet cleaning, using safe non-toxic products. Um, and we'll talk about healthy, healthy you, healthy me, uh, conquering everyday health challenges, some common aches and pains, wounds, et cetera. Then we're going to head out into the garden and talk a little bit about weed management and pest control. And all along the way, I'm going to show you how to make different things like hand sanitizers, multi-purpose cleaners. I have a great uh, uh, one ingredient multi-purpose cleaner that you can use on anything. It's wonderful. And uh, I'm going to show you how to make healthy candles. I think I got some lotion in there. There's a, a luxurious lotion recipe and deodorant and... Uh, uh, all sorts of things tonight. So, <clears throat> so I'd like to start with um, talking a little bit about household cleaners. And I have been following the Environmental Working Group, the EWG, for a long time. They're a nonprofit organization uh, based in Washington, D.C., and they use the power of information to protect human health and the environment. <clears throat> I urge you to go on their website, it's www.ewg.org, to keep up to date with new products that are coming out and what to be wary about, if, um, you know, about the ingredients in them. So you can learn all about them there. And there you can also find all kinds of links to the long-term in-depth uh, studies that they are continuing to, to go about doing. One in particular... Um, is called the EWG Cleaners Hall of Shame, Reveals Hidden Hazards. And this was uh, uh, released back in 2012. So they've been around a long time. This study unearthed compelling evidence that common household cleaners, even the ones that have a, the word safe or natural or green in their label, um, can be very harmful if you're not aware of, of what's in them. Jane Houlihan is the Senior Vice President of Research, and she's the co-author of this study. And she quotes that cleaning your home can come at a high price. Cancer-causing chemicals in the air, an asthma attack from fumes, or serious skin burns from an accidental spill. And this is crazy, but almost any ingredient is legal, and almost none of them are labeled. And this leaves families at risk. Our Hall of Shame products don't belong in the home, she says. So some examples of some of the uh, worst offenders, there's a lot of multi-surface floor cleaners out there. Uh, they have methoxydiglycol in them, and that can be damaging to the unborn child if a, a pregnant woman is using some of these products with this ingredient in them. Uh, there's tarnish removers out there that uh, have up to 7% thiourea, which has been classified as a um, human carcinogen by the state of California and the National Toxicology Program. Lots and lots of multi-purpose cleaners are out there labeled simple, green. Um, I've been fooled by them too. They, they claim to be non-toxic, but they contain 2-butoxyethanol, which is an eye irritant and can cause damage to red blood cells. This is all on EWG's website if you need to know more details. What's scary about some of these multi-purpose cleaners is that they're concentrated. And the concentrated versions are actually sold in a ready-to-use spray bottle despite instructions to dilute it. So to me, that's a little red flag and it's, it's really disturbing because I don't, I don't think they're being used appropriately. You have to have a lot of ventilation and um, those bottles are filled to the top. So you have to dilute it into something else. Um, a couple other examples, there's uh, what the EWG terms is uh, mystery mixtures. Those are uh, like the big box store, private label, private brands. Be wary of these. Um, their product labels offer little or no ingredient information. 
um, other products out there, conventional oven cleaners are some of the worst offenders. They contain sodium or potassium hydroxide, which can burn your skin, lungs, and eyes. Lots of spray cleaners out there with quaternary ammonium compounds. They can trigger asthma and even new cases of asthma in people who have been asthma free. <laughs> so they continue to turn up products loaded with toxic compounds. Many are banned in other countries. Uh, lots of products out there labeled with fragrance or perfume. They're very toxic. Um, and the fumes from the, all of these toxic compounds can linger in our homes for months after each use. So it's pretty scary stuff. Uh, but the good news is that we have control of what we bring into our homes and we can avoid them. They're just not necessary. And I'm going to show you why. So a lot of the uh, one ingredient that I use in many of the do-it-yourself recipes coming up are essential oils. They take the place of those toxic um, uh, fragrances and um, they're, they're actually therapeutic and they actually give you benefits to using them. So I want to give a little history about essential oils, uh, particularly since they're going to be in a lot of our recipes. So aromatic plants have played an important role in all human civilizations. Um, and from the beginning of time, oils extracted from aromatic plants have been recognized as the most effective medicine to, uh, known to mankind. So that's, that's a pretty good statement. And uh, there's just been so much history with essential oils. Uh, they, they, it, they really back up these claims. Um, from about 100 to 400 BC, Arabia was the center of a very lucrative spice trade route, frankincense being their biggest commodity. Uh, this route extended over 2,400 miles across the region to Jordan, and it was commonly referred to as the frankincense trail. So this trail was used so many times that you can still see faint marks on the ground where the camel caravans passed over. That's how they transported these um, commodities. Mm -hmm. And this picture, uh, if you can see my cursor, it's a modern day satellite image uh, where you can see, you can still see the uh, frankincense trail and it, it goes up through here and over here. I hope you all can see that. I think that's an amazing picture. Um, some other evidence of even earlier use of essential oils can be found in ancient Chinese and Egyptian civilizations. The Pen Sao, for example, which was written in about 2500 BC, um, documents the Chinese medicinal use of oils from over 300 different plants. And one of the best preserved uh, documents, the Embers Papyrus, which was written in about 1550 BC, documents the Egyptians' use of frankincense, myrrh, cedarwood, juniper, and coriander, just to name a few. So I think the history of essential oils is really exciting. Um, look at the properties of essential oils. The, the properties are listed here on the left. And uh, there are hundreds of essential oils out there uh, and essential oil blends. And um, these are just a few examples of some of the more effective oils that can help along with our own immune systems combat some of these disease states uh, here on the left. And I'd like to focus on um, this evening, I'll be focusing on the all important antiviral, antiseptic and antibacterial oils, uh, really appropriate for this time that we're going through with the pandemic. Um, immune stimulant oils as well are very important. So I'm gonna be focusing on, on several of those. And um, <clears throat> don't know whether there are any questions here yet, but uh, I wanna stop and make sure that that, uh, there is one question, Selma, here okay. uh, relating to uh, if you now have products in your home with those harmful ingredients, how do you get rid of those products? 
Well, that's a really good question. I know that uh, way back deep and under one of my cabinets is probably one of those bottles as well. And I do know that uh, our re I live in Spotsylvania County. I know our recycling center a couple of times a year will take things that you can't normally get rid of safely without dumping them in the land. Um, my first thought would be to check with, um, you know, with your area's recycling center. Um, they'll take like paint cans and paint thinner and um, all kinds of toxic things. They do it a couple of times a year. Um, I could try to find out more about that because that is a great question. So I, I hope I hope maybe that helps a little bit, but we could we could find out definitely how to to get rid of those if that's not the case in your area. Thank you. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. So not all essential oils are created equally, and uh, if you're interested in buying them. Um, these are the things that you want to make sure of. So they need to be 100% certified, pure therapeutic grade. And oftentimes you'll see the acronym for that being 100% uh, CPTG, but make sure they're 100% therapeutic grade. They need to come in a dark colored bottle, uh, amber, most of them come in an amber color or, or a cobalt blue. Uh, glass bottle. And it's always helpful to know your country of origin, either on the label or online with the company that you're purchasing them from. And these are pictures of um, just a few oil cabinets I have laying around here. So I, I have a few of them. I use them daily. And so I like to keep the cabinets kind of front and center. Um, how to use essential oils. Well, there's a lot of different ways to use essential oils. Tonight, I'm gonna to talk about these three. You can use them aromatically, you can use them topically, and you can use them, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, <clears throat> how to use them to uh, clean and disinfect. So the best way to experience the benefits of essential oils aromatically is through an aromatherapy diffuser. Uh, this is my diffuser here. It's a cool air nebulizing diffuser and there's also ultrasonic ones out there that do, they both do a great job in keeping those oil particles uh, suspended in the air as they're coming out of the little diffuser hole here. Most of them have really cool life changing features on them too. So they're kind of, um, uh, kind of atmospheric as, as well. I In the background here, um, I have a, a steel misto bottle that I use. I put water and essential oils in there and it comes out like a mist. Uh, and then this is just a little metal spray bottle that I repurposed. Um, I think there might have been uh, like a bug spray in it or something, a natural bug spray. And so those are nice to kind of keep and have around and repurpose. And diffusing these oils, particularly the antiviral, antibacterial and antiseptic properties of some of these oils, they'll help to reduce um, you know, fungus and mold in our homes and the air, uh, which is always nice. I like to um, keep diffusers by the bedside. Um, that's, a, that's a nice place for them to be. Um, and diffusers are available all over the internet in a wide uh, range of prices. There's car diffusers, there's um, accessories that you can clip to your air vents in your car. Um, there's jewelry made out of diffuser beads, which are porous beads that you can saturate with an essential oil and uh, uh, when you're on the go and you need to, to sniff them. There's necklaces with pendants that open uh, that contain a wool pad in them that you can saturate with your favorite essential oil. So those are kind of fun. 
So another way to enjoy essential oils is aromatically is just straight inhalation out of the bottle. So just simply unscrew the cap and, and breathe. Um, you can put one to three drops of an essential oil on a cloth, a cotton ball, your pillowcase, even a light bulb that you're getting ready to turn the lamp on. Um, and just simply enjoy the, the aroma from those uh, suggestions. You can also, if you have a cool mist vaporizer or a humidifier, the ultrasonic ones work best to purify the air in our homes. Or you could simply wear um, the perfume as, uh, as a, you can wear the essential oils as a perfume or a cologne. Um, <clears throat> you just simply apply one to two drops on the wrist and neck, on your neck where you would normally put a fragrance. Or you can try this do-it-yourself recipe. Uh, there's a lot of uh, really nice masculine and feminine scented essential oils that anybody can use. So you dissolve 10 to 15 drops of an essential oil into 20 drops of alcohol. You can use vodka or Everclear um, and then combine with a teaspoon of distilled water and either dab it on, apply it that way, or you can put it in like a little misting bottle and spray it on. For an alcohol-free version, you can substitute a teaspoon of jojoba oil instead of the alcohol. Um, using essential oils topically is basically just a direct application of an oil on the area of concern. Essential oils are very potent. They're very, therapeutic, they're very effective, and a little bit goes a long, long way. So more is definitely not better. Um, uh, some of the essential oils like cassia, cinnamon, Douglas fir, oregano, and thyme, they need to be, um, uh, they may require a heavy dilution, uh, around a 30 to a 50% dilution. Um, others, other oils require a moderate dilution uh, and still others don't require any dilution at all. And I just want to give, uh, just put out a little warning here that um, skin sensitivity is the only um, quote side effect of essential oils. So you do have to be careful. So if you have skin sensitivities, always check first. You can email me, I don't mind. Um, you can look it up um, on the internet. There's a, a wealth of information about these oils on the internet as well. To, to dilute an essential oil, we simply just use a, a, a carrier oil, um, a, like a pure vegetable oil. So fractionated coconut oil is my first choice. Almond oil, it's a real light oil. Olive oil and jojoba oil work really well as, as well. Um, diluting essential oils doesn't alter the aroma or the efficacy of the oils. In fact, it enhances them and it makes them go even farther. So that's a win-win. You can apply, one of the best ways to apply essential oils topically is, um, is on our feet believe it or not. So our feet have the, some of the largest pores on our body and it's a great way to absorb all those wonderful properties of essential oils. I like to do this after a shower um, where uh, I, I put them on the, the entire bottoms of my feet. That's where a lot of our reflex points are. Uh, make sure I put a pair of socks on so I don't slip and fall on my floor as I go about my day. And I really like to do this right at bedtime too. Um, it, it's just a wonderful way to, to enjoy the benefits of these oils. The oils are not gonna stain your clothes or your sheets. Um, so that's another win-win. And other quick absorbing areas on the body are behind the ears and on the wrists, just where you would uh, put those scents on yourself. <clears throat> so I have a... Um, a little uh, staples list here to have on hand for some of these recipes coming up. And um, 
they're just simple ingredients. They're inexpensive, they're easy to find, and just non-toxic and very simple. So baking soda, white vinegar, borax, uh, washing soda. I'm gonna be talking about washing soda. We're gonna use that in a uh, do-it-yourself uh, making your own laundry soap recipe. There's Epsom salts, which are wonderful. Um, and then uh, dye-free plant-based liquid soap is a good thing to have on hand. And of course, essential oils. So I wanna talk about one of those ingredients in depth and that's borax. It's one ingredient and I'm gonna show you how to make one cleaner for multiple solutions. Um, Borax is sodium tetraborate. It's a natural mineral, I promise. It has uh, properties that soften water, they eliminate odor, it removes stains, it cleans without chemical fumes or scratching, so it's great for porcelain or fiberglass surfaces. It removes soap scum, hard water deposits, and dirt. So how do you make it? You're gonna need a 12 to 16 ounce spray bottle don't reuse another one from, uh, from a commercial product. You're gonna have to get yourself a new one for this one. A half a cup of borax uh, and 12 ounces of warm water and you just simply dilute the borax in the water until no clumps remain. And then pour into your spray bottle. Always label your bottles, always turn them to the off position after each use. And of course, with any cleaning product, store out of the reach of children and pets. When borax mixes with water, the molecules convert to hydrogen peroxide. And this makes it an excellent cleaner for kitchens and bathrooms. <laughs> borax is great in the laundry as well. Um, it enhances the cleaning power of any laundry detergent. It's a natural alternative to color safe bleach. <clears throat> and all you do is add a half a cup per load to your regular detergent. It's gentle enough for your garments, but it's strong enough to clean carpets and rugs. So the way you do that, if it's a carpet or if it's a rug you can't throw in the washing machine, just simply sprinkle the powder uh, on your carpets and rugs and let it sit 48 hours. I know that's a long time, but there's a good reason for it. And then just simply vacuum. It's safe to walk on. In fact, you should walk on it. Sometimes I put an old sheet over top of it after I sprinkle it, just to keep it from scattering all over the floor or whatnot. Um, it's safe to walk on and it's safe for your pets, uh, but not their fleas. So if you have some four-legged friends bringing in fleas from outside and the, their larvae gets uh, in your carpets, this is how you get rid of them. And uh, if you're going away for a long weekend or you're going on vacation, it's a great time to sprinkle that before you leave your house and let it sit in there until you get back. So your carpets smell really fresh after this. And you can actually take a, um, a bowl of the powdered borax and, um, and put a couple of drops of essential oils of your choice in there. Uh, and just kind of stir it around before sprinkling it on, on your carpets. Works really well. Uh, can I interrupt for just one sec? We have someone here who would like to know where can you buy borax? Because since COVID-19, they have not been able to find it in the grocery stores. Yes, they, you must be shopping at Wegmans because I ask every time I go there. Um, <laughs> usually any grocery store will have it. It's in the laundry section, but I have noticed that it's um, that it's it's really difficult to find the the space on that shelf has been empty. I you know I hate to incur more shipping and uh, using resources, but during COVID, I found that it's it's probably your best bet to avoid a lot of exposure going from store to store uh, to maybe look online. I know it's really convenient to get it locally, and it comes in a really good packaging. I mean, it's a cardboard box that you can recycle, so it's not plastic or anything. All but, right. Yeah. We just got someone here saying that Giant has it right now, as does Weiss. Wonderful. Yeah, I would suggest going, you know, we all go to our favorite grocery stores, and um, hopefully in January, we won't even have to worry about that anymore. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
but that and uh, at the beginning of COVID back in March and April, I had a hard time finding white vinegar. So a lot of these things, um, you know, are, are, are kind of difficult to find, especially with the, uh, the resurgence of the second wave. I hear there's like uh, limited toilet paper again too. So we have to, um, uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I try to keep a, st uh, a, a group of staples on hand. You know, I don't want to be greedy and hoard all of the borax, but you know, um, it's important in my household. So I'll, I'll get an extra box if I see it. But, yeah. uh, Our GM says we would have borax at the co-op. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Thank you. So after you do all that work, you might want to go and give yourself a nice relaxing soak with Epsom salt and lavender or any essential oil. Epsom salt is just basically magnesium sulfate. It's a natural mineral. We need magnesium. Um, it's an essential uh, mineral and it's great for extracting toxins from our body. That's why it's recommended that we soak in it from time to time. And uh, these could be environmental toxins. You know, we're out there and the, all these chemicals that are uh, used to make these toxic products, you know, they're out there too in the environment. So it's always a good idea to, to kind of get those toxins out of your body. Adding something like lavender essential oil is uh, really great. It's relaxing, it's great for the skin. It's an, it's an excellent antidepressant and it's an anti-inflammatory oil. So all you do is just pour a cup of Epsom salt in your bath water along with 10 to 15 drops of lavender or whichever essential oil you want and soak all your troubles away, especially now during this volatile election process. My goodness, we all need a good soak. <laughs> So I'm gonna go in my kitchen here. This is my glass jar. I actually found this at our, um, our thrift shop and it's a wonderful little jar. It's got the little uh, beehive print on it and everything. So I was really excited when I found that. I'm always keeping a lookout for, for glass jars, especially with lids. So I collect small cotton rags, um, you know, just from an old t-shirt or whatever that can't be used any worn anymore. I cut it up into little squares and uh, you just put a small amount of water in the bottom of your jar and add an essential oil of your choice. Lemon is always nice for the kitchen. It's a great disinfectant. Um, and uh, I just, when I'm done with the rags, I just wash them and reuse them, remake another jar. <laughs> Here's a really simple uh, do-it-yourself dishwasher detergent. This literally costs less than a penny to run your dishwasher full load. You need salt, uh, two drops of liquid soap, and no more than that, unless you feel like your kitchen floor needs a good wash, because uh, it'll suds up, and then baking soda. That's it. Totally natural, totally safe. Um, <clears throat> and you just fill your cup in the dishwasher with the baking soda, put a pinch of salt in it and add two drops of your liquid soap and close the door and run your cycle. And you know that thing we're supposed to do every month with our dishwasher, we're supposed to uh, run it empty with, um, with a, a bowl of uh, white vinegar under there to get rid of all the scaling and everything. Um, so you can even add a, a drop or two of essential oils to that vinegar and it'll, it'll make the inside of your dishwasher shine like a dime. And remember in the beginning, uh, oven cleaners were some of the worst offenders on the, the uh, hall of shame list. So here's a, a way to make a totally non-toxic oven cleaner. You just simply make a paste of baking soda and water uh, apply it to your oven, uh, all along the inside of your oven, even on your glass door, if your oven has a glass door on it, and let it sit overnight. And then you wanna spray it with white vinegar the next morning and let it sit for a while while you maybe go do some other things and then just simply wipe it clean. 
you know, it's bad enough that oven cleaners are some of the most toxic things, but when you're spraying it in there, you literally have your head in the oven trying to spray this stuff. So th this is a nice non-toxic way of, of getting it nice and clean. It works really well. And then, um, so the increased use of toxic chemicals in their plastic containers due to the pandemic are, um, are just filling up the earth more and more. So you can make your own um, safe, non-toxic hand sanitizer when you're on the go and can't wash your hands. And this is another product that's really difficult to find right now, pure aloe vera gel, like with no other additives. It's been a real, um, a real chore to find this and the prices are gouged because of it. But when you can find it, get yourself some and keep it on hand. You can use it for other things as well. But you, you combine it, uh, the pure aloe vera gel with grain alcohol. Um, and any one of these oils that I have listed here are really good antiviral oils, antibacterial, antifungal. Um, in fact, I have been frequenting Harrisonburg recently and my son moved there a few months ago. And so uh, I go down there to shop at Friendly City Food Co-op and I was checking out uh, one afternoon and they have hand sanitizers on their, their checkout alleys. And I used a squirt and I was so amazed at how uh, nice it, it felt and how wonderful it smelled and how it didn't leave my hands all sticky and gross like a lot of the hand sanitizers do. So I, I mentioned that, that it was it's like a really nice hand sanitizer. So the cashier uh, read the ingredients to me and they actually um, use uh, their hand sanitizer has thyme oil in it. And um, it's a real, um, uh, really nice antiviral oil. It's used, it's commonly used for respiratory infections and colds. So there's that time again. All right, this is uh, a picture I took out of my laundry room. This picture on the left here is, I'm sure you're all familiar with the 100% wool dryer balls. This is the inside of my dryer. You don't have to use all of these. I just, I was trying to be creative in my photographs, but you can take your essential oils, just put a drop or two on each ball. I usually run a, a load in the dryer with two or three of these balls. And I like to use um, Melaleuca oil and lemongrass and uh, Siberian fur. In my on my laundry balls, it makes it makes our our laundry smell really crisp and and clean, and uh, of course all the the wonderful properties. You know, it's it's disinfecting your clothes. Um, so those are a lot of fun to use, and they take the place of those uh, dryer sheets that you can buy. It cuts down the laundry balls will cut down on your static electricity or your static cling in the dryer. And over here on the right, this is a um, laundry soap that I've been using for a while. It's, uh, the brand is Dan Soap, uh, but it comes in a totally uh, compostable container and it's completely toxic free. It's just a lovely soap to use in the, in the laundry. This box here, <laughs> a friend of mine just picked these up for me the other day. She said it reminded me of her or reminded her of me and so she bought me a box. I've never heard of them before. Some of you may have, but I thought it was a nice alternative as well. And I thought it was worth a mention. It's called Magic Wash Berries and they contain uh, saponins, which is a natural surfactant that's used for washing. And saponins have been around for thousands of years. I mean, like who knew? Um, starting with the early Asian and American natives. So these soap nuts are an environmentally friendly alternative to chemical detergents. They're safe and a, and a natural way, especially for those uh, sensitive to certain allergens. Uh, to, so it's a safe way to avoid harmful chemicals that can be present in laundry detergents. 
uh, saponins are released after they absorb the water in your washing machine and they uh, it's circulating the natural cleaning properties. They remove dirt, oil, and grime. And so the instructions on this box say to just simply place four to six wash berries in, in the included cotton drawstring wash bag, and you just drop it into your washing machine. And it says experience laundry the way nature intended. So um, I'm gonna try these soon. But they, they eventually, you just, you just use them until they disintegrate. So over time, they'll, uh, they'll lose their color and they'll become paper thin and eventually just dissolve. So when that happens, you just put a few more berries in your bag and continue on. So I thought that was a neat idea. And if you're really energetic, I'm going to tell you how to make a five-gallon bucket of laundry soap. So here we go. And you can make less. I think five gallons is a lot, but just make sure you adjust your um, ingredients accordingly. You can cut the, the recipe in half or even in a quarter. Um, so you want to get a bucket with a lid for storage. And the five gallon size, you're going to use a bar of natural soap that you grate with a cheese grater. And then a cup of borax and a cup of washing soda, not baking soda, but washing soda. And that is um, next to the borax in the grocery store, uh, in the laundry section in the grocery store. So uh, I don't know whether that's gonna be there or not for us the next time we need it, but um, you know, hopefully both of those products will be. And then just uh, an essential oil of your choice. So what you're gonna do is boil a big, stock pot of water and you're going to add your grated soap and you're going to stir until all the soap is dissolved and then you pour it into your storage bucket and then you boil another pot of water and add borax and your washing soda and then you're going to stir until all that's dissolved and then you're going to add that to your bucket and then you're going to stir your bucket some more and this is where you want to bring your volume up to uh, the, what the recipe calls for, whether you're making half or whatever, just bring it up and you can just simply use hot water. You don't have to boil anymore um, and let it cool. And when it's cool, you wanna add one to two dropperfuls of essential oil and then stir it. So it's gonna become thick, like, um, kind of like a, a liquidy gel thick kind of situation um, when it's cool. So before, if you're using it out of your storage bucket, you wanna give that a stir before you scoop it out. Um, if you're, uh, you can funnel it into a smaller laundry jug, perhaps one that's already on the planet, you know, with a pour spout. Um, and that way you can just shake the jug before you pour it into your machine. If you're making a large batch, um, there is a, a little bit of stirring going on. So it might be helpful to use a, um, a clean paint stir, uh, stirring bit on your drill. That might help a little bit. And the whole process takes about 45 minutes from start to finish. So if you're really energetic and wanna try that, that's a nice, safe, non-toxic way to make laundry soap. All right, and then uh, we always, my kids have been cleaning our toilets for, for a long time because just simply because we make toilet volcanoes and you do that basically by just sprinkling baking soda in your toilet bowl, giving it a splash of white vinegar, the chemical reaction, it'll start bubbling and kind of erupting and the kids think that's really neat. And then when that's done, I just add a, one drop of, I usually like, I like lemon in the bathroom too. Um, and then just uh, clean your, your toilet bowl as normal. Mm -hmm. All right, I wanna talk about candles. It's holiday time and these make really nice gifts. So most of the candles on the market, um, unless you pay an arm and a leg for them, are pretty toxic. They, they're, they're based with paraffin wax. Um, they have lead wicks. Um, 
and artificial fragrances and colors. So when we light one of these candles, uh, we're not doing our home environment a whole lot of good. It's actually um, uh, kind of polluting the air that we're breathing. You know, lead is very toxic. And I think the reason they use lead wicks is, is it's easier for the manufacturer of the candle to uh, have that wick just standing straight up. Uh, it's, it's, it's helpful to do that when you're pouring your hot mixture into your jar, um, but they're not really good to, to breathe when, they're, when lead is burned. So um, here I have pictured, and you know, I ask for a lot of these things as gifts. You know, if somebody asks me what I want for my birthday or Mother's Day or Christmas, you know, I'm like, well, I want candle making equipment, of course. So, um, you know, I, I get a lot of these things as gifts too. So you're you're going to want lead-free wicks. Um, this one here is a 100% cotton wick, and I have it wrapped around a pencil because that will help hold it taut in the middle of my jar. These down, this down here is a 100% um, a uh, unbleached cotton wick that's been dipped in beeswax. So those will stand straight up uh, when you're pouring. And you can use these little metal wick feeders um, that you can adhere to the bottom of your, um, your candle jar with just a little bit of the beeswax that you're gonna melt. So that's how you would affix the wick to the jar. And I'm always collecting little jars here. So these are just things that um, different things had come in and I've run them through the dishwasher. Um, so you need your, your, your wicks, um, the wick clamps. Uh, sometimes you can uh, affix that with a, a, a double-sided sticker. Uh, your pencil, and you're going to need a double boiler. So in your double boiler, you're going to melt a pound of beeswax pellets. They're right here. You can get those online. Um, and a half. once the beeswax is melted, then you turn your heat off and add a half a cup of coconut oil and essential oils of your choice. I have, I made one here, it's called Elevate, which is the uplifting blend of about six or seven different essential oils. The one in the back here, I don't know whether you can see it, um, my husband made, and it's called Billy Breathe, because he has a lot of allergies. And uh, so we, we come up with creative names for our candles too. So the, they make lovely gifts. And I think those little, little tiny mason jars are so cute. Um, they, they make really nice gifts. This here is a container of shea butter. And I'm going to show you how to make a, a, a really nice lotion using shea butter. <clears throat> so you want about a cup of the shea butter. It's really thick. You're going to have to like chisel it out of the container. Um, uh, one and a half tablespoons of grapeseed oil about 15 to 20 drops of an essential oil of your choice, an electric mixer to get it all nice and floofy, and a container to store your lotion in, and a double boiler again. So you want to make sure all of your equipment is sterile, so run it through the dishwasher. You're going to melt your shea butter and the grapeseed oil in the double boiler at the lowest temperature possible. It might take a few minutes, but make sure it's not like on high heat or anything. Then you're gonna let it cool and add your essential oils and then whip it with uh, an electric mixer and then just simply transfer it to your jar. So that's a nice way to make a homemade lotion. You can also make deodorant. Um, for that, you'll need three tablespoons of coconut oil a quarter cup of cornstarch, six drops of vitamin E oil, 15 drops of essential oil, a tablespoon of beeswax pellets, and a quarter cup of baking soda, and then a deodorant container. You can buy these at, um, uh, there's a website, it's called aromatools.com. You can buy them. 
I think you can even reuse one if you have one laying around. Um, just make sure you clean and wash it out real good. Um, they're the ones with the, the little dial on the bottom that pushes the, the stick deodorant up. Um, so you melt your beeswax and coconut oil in the, in the double boiler, stir in your cornstarch, your baking soda and vitamin E oil, allow it to cool slightly and then add your essential oils and just simply pour it into the empty deodorant container and allow it to cool and harden before, uh, you know, completely before you use it. All right, we're gonna go out to my garden. All of my friends and family give me lavender shrubs. So I think they need me to take a chill pill. <laughs> uh, but I have a, a bunch of them planted out in my landscaping. I have several in pots. Uh, they make the, they have these beautiful uh, lavender colored pods uh, that form on them in the spring and the summer. They're just lovely. And uh, I make potpourri out of them. I just collect when they, the, uh, the blooms, die, they still have such a good aroma to them. I collect them in the jar, in a jar, and you just shake the jar. There's still a lot of scent left in them, and you can open the jar in your home. And when the aroma goes away, you can just simply rejuvenate with a drop of lavender oil again, and it lasts for a couple of weeks uh, per drop of lavender oil. So that's kind of fun. And then, um, a couple of years ago, I came across this recipe that does a great job in managing weeds. So I went out and I got this two gallon um, uh, weed sprayer container. It has a nice uh, long tip on it and it has different tips that you can put on the end of it to really uh, direct where you're, you're gonna put this, uh, this weed killer. Uh, you definitely don't want to accidentally spray something that you don't want to go away because it works really, really well. So the basic recipe, and I double this because my container is a two gallon, but the basic recipe is a gallon of white vinegar, two cups of Epsom salt, and a quarter cup of dye-free plant-based liquid soap. And you go out there and spray your weeds uh, with it. You just dump all of that in your, in your sprayer and kind of give it a swirl around. And then you have to pump that sprayer to get, get it to come out of the applicator. But um, go out in the morning, spray your weeds while the morning dew is still on them and they will be gone by 3 p.m. It's amazing. <laughs> Way better than Roundup. So this is another uh, non-toxic pest control solution that I use on my produce plants in my, um, in my garden. Uh, it's two cups of water, two tablespoons of a food grade mineral oil, three to five drops of peppermint essential oil, pests hate peppermint oil, mm -hmm. and it's very effective. And then three to five drops of a dye-free plant-based liquid soap. So basically the idea is the food grade mineral oil will kind of suffocate those pests. Um, and all pests really hate peppermint oil. Uh, so that's, that's why those two ingredients are in there. And I found them very, I found this very useful on my tomato plants this summer for those little white mites that get on the backs of those leaves and hornworms, which can totally annihilate a, a tomato plant. I mean, those things are horrible. Um, they do, it does a good job in repelling those cabbage worms on leafy greens. So um, you want, oh, I meant to mention on this last slide and this one too, when you go to the trouble to do these two for your weed management and your pest control, check the rain forecast for the day because you'll have to reapply that if it rains on your parade. So uh, definitely learn that one the hard way, um, but otherwise very effective. So I read a little bit this summer about companion planting and um, here comes time again. The plant time is very helpful in repelling cabbage worms that were eating um, my kale. So I planted a thyme plant in the middle of my kale bed and that worked really well. 
And also, as I was reading about it, I read that wasps are our friends. And so uh, while I was out there literally planting this thyme plant, I was able to witness a wasp that ate a cabbage worm off of one of my kale leaves, almost in the same fashion that a human being would suck up a, a long spaghetti noodle. It was really so incredible. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, uh, thyme plants work really well. I'm going to get more into companion planting as I continue to garden. I just think that's the coolest thing. Um, so uh, I think that was, uh, was about it. Let's see. Yeah. So this is the end of my presentation. There's so much more to talk about. There's so many things that you can do with all these wonderful ingredients from Mother Nature. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I, I hope that you found at least a part of it helpful. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Selma. That was, um, I will have to go back to this once we post it um, and, and see, uh, and look at all the recipes. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot. I mean, just in this presentation and everywhere else. And you know, um, the, uh, there's, if you, if you're interested in, in, uh, you know, pursuing using essential oils, I just want to strongly caution you that, you know, there can be a dark side to them if they're not used correctly. So uh, email me or find yourself a good reference that you can uh, keep handy to look at every day. And usually in these, um, these books, like I call mine the oil Bible. Um, it, it's, it's just a wealth of information. There's a lot of charts and uh, uh, like you can look up a disease state and find out which oils you can look up an oil and find out which disease state, vice versa. Um, and then uh, of course, we'll, we'll all have to keep our eyes open for some of these really basic ingredients that are hard to find now because of the mm -hmm. pandemic. So um, I want to tell you that the, that the thank yous are pouring in, but there are oh, also wonderful. still <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> very excited here. Wonderful. And, and Chris, our GM, says he's got a list ready now. Oh, um, to, to stock uh, the store? That's great. <laughs> uh, one suggestion here that um, Rachel at the farmer's market sells some of these recipes if you do not want to make them yourself. Yes, yes. Yeah. I remember the, the video that Chris uh, posted about her. She's she's yes. Just an amazing, that's, it's amazing what she does. So I'd love to go visit and see how, see her setup on how, you know, she makes soaps and all kinds of things, so. Another question here that we have is, for example, the dishwasher detergent, um, which mm -hmm. is of great interest to me as well. Mm -hmm. um, can you pre-make that and, you know, make it in a gallon of some sort? Well, you just need a pinch of salt and then the baking soda, you just want to pour in enough to, um, to fill your dishwasher soap cup. So I don't know whether, I mean, and then you have to add the two drops of the liquid soap. So I don't, I'm not sure how effective it would be if it were all pre-made together. I mean, you could okay. certainly try it. I'm, I'm sure some of these uh, pods and things that are on the market are, you know, they're pre-made. They have all the ingredients in there. Um, I mean, you could try it. What I do is I keep a, a, a glass jar under my uh, cabinet, under my kitchen sink next to my dishwasher of baking soda, and I have a scooper in there. And then um, I just have a pourable salt container that I keep under there and then just a couple squirts. Right. So it's just three little um, of everything. Yes, yep. yes. It, I mean, you know, for somebody on the go and really busy, I get you don't want to open up three different things, but um, uh, I don't know. I, to me, it's worth it. It's, it's not a big deal, but. Okay. 
Yeah, sounds good. Um, the other one is: Does the pest control uh, mm -hmm. work for ants as well? I've I've not tried it on ants. I know, I do know that they don't like that peppermint oil in it. So I would I would venture to guess yeah. that it would do a good job repelling ants as well. Okay. I mean, uh, I feel like I feel like if 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 it'll if it'll repel a hornworm off a tomato plant, it, it would repel an ant. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right, one more about the uh, borax solution. Um, I'm not sure which one this was for which, because you had two, I think. Um, do you need to use it up within a certain amount of time before it loses its effectiveness? The, oh, the multi-purpose cleaner? Yep with the borax in the water. Hmm. Um, I've never really uh, had it go bad before it was empty. I, I don't think, I don't remember reading anything in, in my literature and my it shouldn't. recipe book. It's, it's, yeah. um, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just borax. Borax is borax. I mean, you can suspend right. it in water over time. It, it won't go bad. I don't think it would go bad. Um, if you put a, a drop of um, essential oil in it, that'll help preserve it a little bit better too. Remember all the, all the properties of essential oils. So. Um. Now we have, we have a very demanding viewer here who says, is there any way you can put this in a Word document? <laughs> All ah. these recipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, I, I could probably do that. Um, for some of them, uh, maybe the, um, for example, the um, the amount, the ratios. Right. Were, right. Yeah. Um, for those of us who are more challenged. <laughs> Well, I could certainly do that. I mean, I could, you know, we could even have a food co-op uh, recipe card file for some of this stuff. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to okay. type my. Um, Your daughter could probably put all of this into a Word document for you. <laughs> <laughs> Without rolling her eyes at me, right? Yes. <laughs> um, I'm, 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 I'm typing in my um, email address. If anyone... We already did, but you can. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So well, look, there it is again in case somebody. More is better. More is better because everybody yes. wants to know more. Yes. So um, uh, I think uh, what, oh, that's from, um, from Andy there. Andy, have you jumped on the bandwagon yet? I hear you're up there with my husband and bringing toxic <laughs> chemicals in our house. <laughs> oh, oh, I wanted it to be anonymous. <laughs> yes. No, I um, I don't mind if you have a question. Anybody, if anybody has a question, you can shoot me an email. I don't mind. I really don't. So, um, uh, it, you know, it's all it's all a matter of networking and sharing recipes and ideas. Uh, so I, I really don't mind at all. But we'll we'll try. I'll try to get something together, at least with the recipes that I have on my presentation tonight. They're so simple and so cheap. Like that dishwasher one uh, for your automatic dishwasher. It, that costs less than a penny. To run yeah, yeah. a load, you know. I mean, it's just so economical. Well, we'll all save money, and we'll all and we'll all be healthier. But yes. I want to thank you, Selma. This You're has been very wonderful. Welcome. You're very um, welcome. And the feedback is the same. I'm I'm talking for everybody here. Thank and, you. Um, yeah, we're looking for the next segment. Wonderful. <laughs> hey, maybe there'll be a part two. You never know. <laughs> So. so good evening, everyone. Thank and you all. Great to have you all here. Thank you so much. Thanks, Els. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Great job, Selma. Thank yeah, you. Great job. Thanks so much. Thanks, Selma. All right, Rich. Take care. <laughs>